So from a technical point of view, 5G roaming is quite similar to previous technologies, but it also introduces several new concepts that lead to some important differences that mobile operators need to understand. The most important one being that 5G standalone is secure by design. It uses Transport Layer Security, TLS, in the new N32 roaming interface, meaning that certificates are being exchanged between the home network and the visitor network, and more particularly between the security edge protection proxy of the home network, the SEP, and the SEP of the visitor network. This new network element has a similar function as the DRA in 4G, which was a diameter routing agent, and acts as a kind of firewall for the signaling part. So whenever a subscriber of a particular mobile operator travels abroad and wants to attach to a 5G standalone network, the visitor network and the home network need to exchange these certificates. And so they will need to be implemented manually at the start of the roaming agreement and renewed every six months or roaming between these two networks will simply fail. There are different setups possible supported by the GSMA Association. So the setup that is the fastest and let's say the easiest to manage is when the SEP is hosted by the IPX provider, like BIX. The integration will be faster. It can be done in three weeks instead of months and the certificate management will be done automatically. It also gives the possibility to add value-added services like business intelligence and analytics, but also fraud and security on top of the hosted solution. Another challenge in 5G standalone roaming is that often the mobile users need very low latency and high bandwidth assurance. And so the customers might have SLAs in place with their mobile operator, which will also need to be honored when these customers roam abroad. So mobile operators will need to sign new roaming agreements, contracts with their 5G standalone roaming partners to reflect these needs. And then from a billing point of view, traditional TAP files cannot be used as they are too old fashioned and there is no flexibility to address specific 5G use cases. So they can only be used to invoice traditional voice calls and SMS. So the next generation of billing will need to be implemented, which is called BCE.